you got a hoopty like this and all the speakers are blown and you want to have a little bit of extra bass is the walmart system any good or is it just trash we're gonna meter this thing and see what kind of numbers it does i know you guys have been waiting god over a year just to see the kind of score this thing does but in the meantime, I've had time to play with it and kind of dial it in and see really what it is. Let's go hop in and meter this thing. All right, so we got the SPL lab hooked up and we're gonna do a dash score first. We got both doors open, trunk down. We got a JY NXT in the back. Let's see what kind of numbers this thing can do. I did a little bit of testing ahead of time just to see where we peak at and 46 is our number. A 130.2 on the money at the dash. That's pretty respectable for a system that entirely head unit, door speakers, sub and box and amp and you can see we're only clamping 146 watts. We are bridged at four ohms on uh, two channels. So we're, we don't have a ton of power to work with, but let's just throw it down the kick, see what we can get. A 130.6 down at the kick. That's not bad. I mean, still 130 dash and kick that's respectable all right so about the score that i was thinking it was going to do was a 130 which is not terrible at all for what it is a sealed box on 150 watts that's not bad maybe let's see how it sounds and go from there Now, to keep it short and sweet, uh, over the year that I've had it and the amount of times I've driven it, uh, I did have to dial it down. The amp was uh, four ohms and four ohms, you know, wired down together left and right. And it's just way too much power for these little speakers. So what I did was I bridged them up to eight ohms on each bridge channel. So just four ohms and four ohms power wise. So it's it sounds a lot better. and. Uh, you know, the gain is all the way down. Dude, but if you got a hoopty like this and all the speakers are blown and you're just trying to replace something and you want to have a little bit of extra bass. Now, what I'm going to do with this car and the system is I am actually going to remove that amplifier. So they have the power acoustic amp, which is a hundred bucks. I just picked one up for 50, it was on clearance. I was like, I'm gonna buy it. And I'm gonna try this same system with a little bit more power and at the same price, still $250 because we're removing that Pioneer amp. We don't need to power them other than the head unit and we can utilize the rest of our budget for amplifier on the sub. And we're gonna keep the same sub and box. We're just gonna switch out that Pioneer amp Put in the power acoustic which has been amp dynoed multiple times uh does 600 at two ohms and i believe three or four hundred at four ohms and that's what we're going to be wired at but i have a feeling we'll be able to get a little bit more power out of it i thought this was going to sound phenomenal for what it is but those speakers and the doors are just so cheap they don't need 50 watts a channel they just don't they need 10 <laughs> that's that's it anything after that it just sounds bad and they're cheaper speakers so they have a pretty harsh i don't know one kilohertz to four kilohertz tone it just really got to dial it down if you're playing it extremely loud i just gave it less power and now it sounds a lot better so let's do that all right guys we are at walmart trying to get the most dbs out of this ultimate walmart build for 250 dollars. this is round two we did the pioneer four channel now 
we have the Power Acoustic 2500 Razor, wired to four ohms, does around 400 on the amp dyno. Let's see how much power we can get out of this and see if it makes it sound any better. Let's go meter this thing. <laughs> they are just had to stop by to check out the Walmart build. All right, so we got the Razor hooked up in the back onto the Jensen. We are at Walmart for extra dBs. Let's see if this amplifier is any louder, which I think it's gonna do more power, but let's find out. And we're gonna do the same peak and see what it meters. All right, we got the old Pioneer amp just sitting there, just so you guys know. And uh, let's do it. We are on the dash. We did a 130.2, I believe. Let's see what we can get here. Alright, so we got our kick score on the dash and we added about another 100 watts of clamp power. We're clamping 250 and rising about up to 8, 9 ohms, give or take. And uh, so that's not bad. Um, you got to double your power to gain 2 or 3 dBs, but we only uh, added 100 watts. <laughs> and Another thing is, you actually can max out on your system of what you got. All right, we're down in the kick. Let's see what we can get. All right, now that is impressive, a 131.5. Last time down in the kick, we only did a 130.6. So we definitely gained from that added power on the kick score. So I like it. That's not bad. And it sounds more musical. With this whole setup, uh, honestly, you know, you get what you pay for, but it's perfect for the average beginner bass head trying to get into it and they just want to make their system bang. You know, they got the stock. Geo Metro. In this case, it's a Chevy, but it's the same thing. It's a hoopty, it's a beater, it's a winter beater, and the speakers are all blown out. It's perfect for it. And honestly, you could use either setup, either amplifier. You could use either the four channel Pioneer or this Razor 2500. Honestly, both would work. You could get a little bit more mids and highs using the Pioneer, but a little less bass. And this one's got more bass and a little less mids and highs. And uh, honestly, a lot less configuration. You're kind of limited on both setups, but I like the four channel just for the simple fact I can add crossovers to my mids and highs. This I can't, you would have to add fast bass blockers or uh, just turn the bass down. You'll be good to go. YouTube and it's fun. <laughs> Awesome. All right, well, let's just head back to the YouTube room and I'll give you my final review on everything. All right, well, I think I covered it pretty well out at Walmart on the field, but man, the ultimate Walmart $250 build, was it a success or did it flop? Uh, I would say it did exactly what I anticipated, but that's me. And for the average consumer, it's going to give them a lot more than they would uh, assume. We'll put it that way. But at the same time, beginners also expect a lot. When they're throwing any kind of money into their build, they want to do hair tricks. They want to be loud. They want to be the guy coming down the street three blocks away and you hear things rattling. Everybody wants to be that. But... You got to pay for that regardless. I feel like the best way to get a very nice system minimum at the starting cost for an entire system, six to eight hundred dollars. And you're going to have something that's quality. It's going to sound really good and it's going to be loud and it's going to be worth more. Anything that you just jump into to start off with, it's going to not be that great for the entry price. But as you go up, you will get better quality. And then after a certain point, there are diminishing returns on the other end after you're spending thousands of dollars 
to gain 2 dbs. Trust me, we all know. But regardless, this system did great, and I'm happy that I finally got to finish this for you guys. I had a little bit of car troubles and everything else got in the way, and hey, it's done, it's finished. I might try a few little things, but it's not going to be part of the series. I want to end this off on a good note. I mean, we did a 131.5 when we added more power to the sub for a $30, $40 sub and a $40 box that you put together, $80, you get what you pay for and it wasn't bad. And if you play it within reason, it actually sounds really good. It works. But if you try making it sound even louder, eh, you can tell that you cheaped out on some ends of the system. So either way, it did okay. It did all right. But I just want to thank you guys for staying loyal to the series. And I'm sorry it took so long again. But thank you guys for watching. I love you so much. And we're going to have some B-roll after footage, of course. So make sure you check that out. But without further ado, I want to say thank you to my Patreons. Thank you everyone that tunes into the live streams, super chats, and donates to the channel. I love you guys. More content like this will be coming down the line. So please stay tuned. Love you guys. And as always, Stay living loud. I will see you on the next one. Thank you, Jake, for uh, giving me this great idea of, you know, maybe futuristic headrest results. Now, this isn't scientific by any means by it sitting on the seat, but it's pretty darn close to the side of my head where I would be listening in the car and both windows are wide open and this is going to simulate what it would be like to get a demo of this thing how many dbs are actually hitting your ear and let's see how loud it really is does it keep up will it break a 30 i don't know and i might start doing this on a lot more of my cars headrest outlaw with the door shut i get it you can get a higher score but Honestly, you're not giving out demos like that. You got both windows down, doors shut in most scenarios. So I like this score because it's realistic. So let's see what it does at the headrest. <laughs> and of course, we have a little bit of a different peak. It's down at 43 Hertz for this position. Always know that your peaks can change. at 127.4 with both windows down at the headrest. That is a ultimate $250 build. One other thing I wanted to try before we wrap this up is with the seat shut, how most people will be driving their cars. Let's see how loud it is in the normal kick position. flat I'll take that thank you everyone that tunes into the live streams thank you everyone that turned and we are back. We got the ultimate Walmart system for $250. This thing is, it sucks. <laughs>